So they, this, this guy, Bill Koch, his thing with his dad's money that he has now turned into more of his money, his thing is wine. And he wants all of it. He wants all of the coolest shit in the cellar that he has made. And it is, this is some James Bond level shit, of course. He's got this huge thing. There are like wine bottles in the cement as like decoration. So Rudy was not the only guy to pull the wool over the eyes over old Bill Koch. This other guy, this German dude, um, I try to find the guy's name. Oh, no, did I delete Urkel it? Guru. Yes, this other guy defrauded Bill Koch for $10 million, and he just alleged a bunch of things and sold them to him that didn't exist. For example, wine from Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Bill thought that that still existed. Yeah. And then he like, could buy it. On, man. Dude, yeah. fuck you. Grow That's up. It. But he is also wealthy enough that when it was brought to his attention, he could go on a crusade. And then there's this picture of him on the cover of like Wine Spectator, like in a cowboy hat. Like, here's the renegade man bringing down the wine world to fraud. Like, you look, you're the problem. This is hilarious. I yes. absolutely love this about you. So, yes, he's he's it's like, he's like uh, I'm, I'm sealing away an ancient evil only to become the ancient evil. Right. So now he sues this other this German guy from the 90s and he sues Rudy, of course, and he gets the payout and Rudy goes to prison and then well, he's sentenced and he gets deported. Is he in prison in Indonesia or is he just gone? So as of 2021, according to the L.A. Times, uh, Rudy has been deported. Uh, he uh, so the the article reads uh, the one time darling of the L.A. wine scene who built collectors by selling cheaper rebottled booze has been deported to Indonesia. Uh, U.S. Uh, immigration officials said uh, that he was he left on a commercial flight from Dallas Fort Worth to Jakarta, uh, which, by the way, Jakarta is not the name of Indonesia's capital anymore. I think they just like renamed. Did, did they, they really? reassign the capital? Did they rename? Yeah, like it, it, like Jakarta is not the side. Not the capital. I, I, I think that. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, figure that Indonesia. out. Indonesia. Jakarta. Is it Jakarta still? It says Indonesia's government wants to move the capital from Jakarta on the island oh. of Java to the island Borneo for gotcha. 30, $33 billion to build a new metropolis they're calling Nus- Nusantara. So they want to like build. They a are new building capital. a new capital. Yes. By the way, have you seen that thing? That's like allegedly like a super long, like mega city. Like I'm a obsessed straight with line this. in we the sand. Talk about that. Yeah. The Saudi Arabia is. Super city. So like scientists are on board with that. Did you know that? No, it's super good for climate change. Wow. Congrats. People live on top of each other. The great wall of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Most people it, on top of each other. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, because like the cities and yeah, high that's speed rails cool. and shit. It's, it's kind of, I got into the weeds on that. So that's great. <laughs> we that. will talk about this fake city that they're building side quest over Bill Koch got defrauded by these people, but he's a billionaire and he has nothing to do. The industry runs itself. We need toilet paper. So he goes on this crusade. He gets the German guy. He gets Rudy. Rudy goes to prison and then he's deported. It sounds like. And Mr. Koch gets all of his money back. But the real winner here is uh, us because we get to laugh at both of and all of these people for being defrauded for their stupidity. I don't feel bad for the influencers that couldn't sniff out that Firefest was bullshit. And I don't feel bad for the rich people that bought all this wine and that thought like, yeah, Eighty thousand dollars is a reasonable amount of money for this wine, and the person who backs me up, the greatest part of the documentary, and what must have been one of the most amazing moments of drama in the history of an industry that is filled with douchebaggery and boredom, must have been when the French winemaker, whose wine was allegedly being sold, went to the auction, and when it was sold, he's like, "Hey, that's not my wine. I never made that. My family never did that. This is total bullshit. You're all liars." He I stood withdraw up in my the wines. House. He literally stood up in the auction house and said, Shakabi. Jacques. <laughs> Jacques. A, a, a literal Jacques. He literally did that. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he literally yeah. went there and he was like, no. And then the other thing is, and this is true, people that have been to Italy and France will tell you that the French and Italians think about us for by spending 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars a bottle. 80, not 80,000. They think we're complete morons. And they're correct about correct. that. It's ridiculous. They're like, yeah. Get your refillable it's- wine bottle, go to the store fill it up why why are you doing this to yourselves like i would never sell it for for more than that so then last thing before we get to the index is every time with one of these fraudsters there are people that are complicit yep and in this instance it's the auction houses they were like oh is it fraudulent we don't know anything about that we'll take our cut please thank you bye that's, that's one of the things about these frauds is like it is amazing how much you can get away with just because people don't verify things like like the uh going back to the the instant replay with the guys who were convicted of uh, of cheating with the bass fishing thing mm-hmm. like they did that for years and people yeah. like they were they were accused of having done that for years in the video that that broke uh headlines yeah and like 
nobody ever like verified people just yeah. didn't check so and when you're dealing with like quantities of wine that's already a kind of a mysterious thing and you're looking at like all the old labels kind of look the same and like most of the characteristics of the bottles are similar right and, like they're not meant to be opened they're not meant to be investigated like right, the preservation right. of this thing that like every time you drink wine and every time you open open wine that consumption uh, i think one of the one of the investor bro dipshits that they show on like a clip from a news yeah, segment yeah. he's like well uh, there's already a, an artificial uh price cap because or like a demand cap because every time you drink wine uh, it's it's gone. It's not like currency or whatever. So I don't know. It's not I, gone. I think it's helping like, me. It's helping my brain. It's things right. are good. Yeah. It's right. Good. Veritas. So, so, but like these things are not. They're, they're not really meant to be interrogated. They're meant to be yeah. held onto by hoarders of wealth. So yeah. the lack of investigation into this kind of stuff it makes sense. It's like, well, why would you just like like why would you verify and vet every single bottle from these like pallets and pallets of ultra rare, ultra valuable shit when when you could just simply not and take a big cut of the money because you're the auction house and uh, it behooves you not to ask questions.